The Strange Man's Arrival The stranger came early in February, one wintry day, through a biting wind and a driving snow over the down. A fire! In the name of human charity, a room and a fire! Mrs. Hall lit the fire and left him while she went to prepare him a meal. Can I take your hat and coat, sir, and dry them in the kitchen? No, I prefer to keep them on. As you like, sir. Soon the room will be warmer. Mrs. Hall, feeling that her conversational advances were ill-timed, laid the rest of the table quickly and whisked out of the room. When she returned, he was still standing there like a man of stone. Your lunch is served, sir. I suppose I may have them to dry now. Leave the hat. He held a white cloth, a servette he had brought with him over the lower part of his face, so that his mouth and jaws were completely hidden, and muffled his voice. But what startled Mrs. Hall was the fact that his entire forehead above his blue glasses was covered by a white bandage. I, I didn't know, sir, that. She glanced at his white swathed head and blue goggles again as she went out of the door, but his napkin still covered his face. The poor souls had an accident or an operation or something. What a turn those bandages did give me. When Mrs. Hall went to clear away the stranger's lunch, her idea that his mouth must also have been cut or disfigured in the accident she imagined he had suffered was confirmed. For he was smoking a pipe, and all the time that she was in the room, he never loosened the silk muffler he had wrapped round the lower part of his face to put the mouthpiece to his lips. I have some luggage at Bramblehurst Station. He asked her how he could have it sent. He bowed his bandaged head quite politely in acknowledgement of her explanation. Tomorrow, there is no speedier delivery. He seemed quite disappointed when she answered, No, it's a steep road by the down, sir. A carriage was upsettled there a year ago. A gentleman killed besides his coachman. Accidents, sir, happen in a moment, don't they? They do. But they take long enough to get well, sir, don't they? My sister's son, Tom, cut his arm with a scythe, tumbled on it in the A-field, and, bless me, he was three months tied up. Sir, it's given me a dread of a sight, sir. I can quite understand that. He was afraid one time that he'd have to have an operation. Was he? He was, sir, and no laughing matter to them as he had the doing for him. As I said, my sister being taken up with her little ones so much. There was bandages to do and to undo, so if I may say, sir... Will you get me some matches? My pipe is out. He turned his shoulder upon her and stared out of the window again. It was very discouraging. Evidently, he was sensitive on the topic of operations and bandages. 